Hello and welcome to the One Life Church devotional series. If you're joining us for the very first time today, if you read two chapters a day for the next 20 months, you will get the whole way through the Bible. And so today's chapters are Genesis 26 and Acts chapter 12. Now I'm sitting here in my kitchen at home and I don't know how often you, you think about this. The water that, in my particular instance, comes straight up from under the ground, if you've got a borehole, is just always on tap. I mean, how often do you think about, I'm not going to have water today, or I'm, I'm not going to have enough to drink, or enough to feed my animals today? It's just something we take as given. But when you read the Bible, water signified life. Now, now these herdsmen who had massive herds, and, and we're going through semi-arid and sometimes very arid regions. Water was huge. And um, so what happens in, Acts chapter, uh, in, in Genesis 26 is that Isaac finds himself in a time of famine. And so the Lord leads him to go down to a place called Gerar. Uh, he goes there and he settles there. He gets up to the same tricks, unfortunately, that his dad did. But despite all his frailties, God's blessing is on him. And eventually, the king of Gerar says to him, listen, you've got to move, but because you, you just become too wealthy, too numerous, and off he goes. And, and what happens in this story is that the Philistines fill up the wells that Abraham, Isaac's dad, had dug. So when he got there with his animals, no water. They dug new ones, and the Philistines came in and fought over them. And, and then, uh, you know, he dug new ones, and the Philistines came and fought over them again. And then eventually they found a space and they just dig, dig these wells and they dug some wells and, and, and no one came. And so they called them Rehoboth, which means God has given us room. And so what we see in chapter 26, God intends for you to have room, room to flourish. Now what hems you in? What sucks the life of God out of you? God's intent is that you flourish, that you have room to grow, grow in Him and be fruitful. Now, when we move to uh, chapter 12 of Acts, uh, we can see that Herod and the Roman Empire was hemming in the church, putting them in, like stopping up their wells, stopping up their joy. In fact, putting them in jail. I mean, James had his head cut off. I mean, that hectic. And then Peter was arrested. Now, imagine being Peter arrested. Herod plans to kill you like he's killed your mate, James. And we find Peter asleep. How do you figure that? How do you sleep when your mate has been beheaded? Well, you know, Peter knew God intended him to live in a spacious place. And God had already said to Peter, you're going to be an old man. Someone's going to lead you around when you're an old man. And, and there he was, young man in jail, knowing he can trust God for his future. He can trust God to, to bring him into a spacious place. And that's exactly what happens here. You know, the disciples are busy interceding and praying for Peter. Uh, an angel comes, wakes Peter up. Uh, leads him out of the jail, miraculously opens the doors. In fact, it's quite humorous. He gets to the prayer meeting, knocks on the door, and the servant called Rhoda comes down, rushes upstairs, says, Peter's here. They say, can't be, he's in jail. That would you be brave him to be freed, and he now actually is free because you put him into a spacious place. No, 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 it's got to be his angel, which is another interesting thing that God will assign angels to us. Eventually, they, they believe her, and Peter comes up, and he explains what's happened. And then he says, Peter says, listen, tell the other disciples what's happened to me. This is going to really encourage them. God does not intend us to be confined. It's not that we're not going to go through tough times. Not that we're not going to have the enemy come up against us. But, but Peter moves into this really uh, spacious place of preaching the gospel. And despite the Philistines' plans to stop up the wells, to stop up the life of God, he carries on. And this is how this chapter ends. Uh, chapter 12 ends like this, but the word of God continued to spread and to flourish. Just like Isaac, uh, regardless of what the Philistines were stopping up and how water had become scarce, Isaac continued to flourish. Now, I'm not suggesting that God wants to make your life comfortable all the time. He doesn't. He uses hardship to mold you and to shape you. But this I am certain of. God wants to bless you. He wants to move you into a spacious place, even when you're confined, even when you're in jail, even when the water has dried up. 
I trust that as you read these chapters, looking at the patriarch Isaac and the apostles in Acts chapter 12, you'll understand that God allows his church to go through tough time. But his promise and his plan is that we live in a place like Rehoboth, a spacious place where he gives us water in a dry land, freedom in the face of captivity. God bless you.